my name is Sophia Colette Eric, and I am an art historian, academic researcher, and curator of multisensory experiences. Right now, my main work is with the European funded project Odoropa, which advocates for smells and smelling as important to Europe's cultural heritage. And today I have Andreas Keller with me, who is a New York based academic with PhDs in neuroscience and philosophy. And very importantly, he's interested in olfactory perception. He has over a decade of experience in olfactory psychophysics and the clinical aspects of olfaction. And the results of his psychophysical studies have shed light on human olfactory capacities, on the relation between uh, the structure and smell of odor molecules, and on the perceptual consequences of variability in odor, odorant receptor genes. You can read more about this in his book, The Philosophy of Olfactory Perception. Um, and he is currently the owner of Olfactory Art Keller, an art gallery dedicated to olfactory art. So uh, welcome, Andreas. Thank you for being uh, here today. <laughs> Hi, Sophia. Thanks for having me on your program. Today, uh, we'll talk about olfactory perception, of course, and olfactory art and also smell uh, within the gallery space. We've spoken a bit on the podcast about smells in museums, but I think it's nice to talk a little bit about how it's different in a gallery. So to start, your uh, biography, which I just read, already raises uh, interesting topics and impressive terminology. So I wanted to start there. Can you explain in an easily understandable way for myself and our audience uh, what olfactory psychophysics is? Yes, of course. So psychophysics, olfactory just means it, it concerns the sense of smell. And then psychophysics is a, a branch of research that connects psychology to physics. So the old philosophical model of humans as the ghost in the machine and so on all presupposes some kind of dualism between the mental going ons and the physical going ons. And so psychophysics is the research of connecting those two, what's going on mentally in your head and what's going on physically in the world. And so concretely psychophysics in many senses concerns predicting what kind of mental representation we will have in our brain when we encounter a physical stimulus in the world. So a very well-known psychophysics discovery is the wavelength of light, the wavelength of light that hits our eyes and the color that we perceive in our mind. So that is a psychophysical relationship between light, which is a physical thing, and perceived color, which is a mental thing, and their rules and predictions, and those two things are connected by long um, 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 rules that, that regulate those things. And so olfactory psychophysics just tries to do the same thing for smells. And uh, is the context included in that, like not just the, f the physical wavelength of smells or the molecules which enter the nose, but is it also about the context in which the smell is received? The, the, the goal is to include the context and the entire situation you encounter. In practice, the research is often a very controlling as many variables as possible and trying to eliminate the context to find connections. But the goal is to include every everything. So again, to go back to the much better understood example of colors. So there's differences in how colors are perceived depending on the neighboring colors. So there's a lot of mm -hmm. um, uh, all uh, uh, visual illusions that you can, you know, test out yourself and you realize how it's not just the wavelength, but it is the context, spatial context in which it is given. And so that would all be part of that, that of that research field. Can you give an example of how that's measured in in research? Yes, um, I mean, it, 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 it is 
fairly fairly simple on the experimental side. So many experiments um, I've done, for example, concern the similarity between different molecules. So people are given, for example, three molecules to smell, and then they're asked to group them into a group of two that are more similar and one outlier. And they do that over and over again with different groups of molecules. And then when you have enough of that data, you can build a space in which you arrange all those molecules by how they smell. And then once you have this so-called odor space, you look at the physical and chemical characteristics of that molecules and try to find a, again, a space in which you can arrange them based on those physical chemical characteristics. And then you try to map those two spaces onto each other. So the experiments, you know, like when I did those experiments, you just, I put out a Craigslist ad and people came in and I gave them many, many different things to smell and asked simple questions about it. How strong it is, how much do you like it? Sometimes you assign descriptors, so you have a list of descriptors, fishy, flowery, leathery, and they say if it smells like that or not. Sometimes they do similarity judgments, and all that data tells us how people perceive those smells, and then we try to explain that based on the molecules. It's so such an interesting connection between molecular structure of smell and like cultural perception um, by people. So that's a really interesting connection between these two sometimes seen as separate uh, things, yeah. but they're not separate um, yeah. a lot of the time. So that's, uh, that's really- Yeah, good. I mean, there, there is a huge, a huge context mm -hmm. dependence on that. For example, the pleasantness of a molecule most researchers would believe is mostly due to experience and association. If you look at very young babies, they are curious about any odor and explore anything that has a smell with equal interest. And then only as an adult do we have this idea that some odors are pleasant and others are unpleasant. So that doesn't seem to be something that is encoded in our brain when we are born, but something that evolved through the, through the associations we make in our lifetime. Yeah. 